Getting over it. Flappy Bird. Dark Souls. What do these games all have in common? That's right. They all wish they were Gex. But other than that, they are all famous for the specific emotion they evoke when played. Some games make people feel excited, or sad, or scared. These games, however, these games make people feel angry. Or do they? Let's start our discussion with Dark Souls, because I feel like that pick is probably the most contentious. You may be thinking to yourself, Buddy, slow down. Dark Souls does not make its players angry, okay? It makes its bad players angry. I am not a bad player. Alright, I'll concede that point. Let's say you're good at Dark Souls, and let's say you've never gotten mad at the game, and let's say you never got bullied in trigonometry class for having the entire Demon Souls Wikipedia page preloaded onto your calculator. I mean, I guess it's possible. Unfortunately, however, most people at one point or another get mad at the games they play, and Dark Souls has been the crux of a lot of that rage for a solid decade. But it isn't supposed to make you mad. It's supposed to make you feel victorious. Being angry is just a potential byproduct of its core gameplay. Where some people feel anger and despair, some feel a sense of motivation and perseverance. Just think about it for a second. This is the case with almost all brutally difficult games. It's most obvious in Getting Over It, in which the unconventional controls and unforgiving environment has caused countless keyboards to be snapped in half. Most people think the purpose of the game is to make players angry so that it goes viral on YouTube or whatever. But what if I told you it's the opposite? What if I told you that the purpose of the game was to calm you down? Boy, what the f*** are you talking about? This game has never calmed anybody down. Well, maybe not while they were playing it. But the game is more than just a game. It's practice. Whenever you practice something, you want to be in a controlled environment. You want a repeatable, safe process that you can attempt over and over again until you get it right. When a boxer is training in the gym, there's no penalty for messing up. They can try over and over again until they get it just right. When they're in an actual fight, however, there is clearly a pretty big penalty for messing up. They could lose a match or even lose a couple of teeth. So we know people need effective practice before they can execute optimally. Now, I know what you may be thinking. What the f*** does this have to do with Flappy Bird? Everything. It has everything to do with Flappy Bird. And Dark Souls, and getting over it, and every other game that has frustrating moments in them. Which, let's be honest, is most games. What do these games actually have in common? It's pretty obvious. Annoying bullshit. And I got news for you. Annoying bullshit is not exclusive to video games. It's, uh, it's everywhere. At work, at school, at home, I mean, where isn't it, really? When a game we're playing feeds us a fresh serving of annoying bullshit, we could just grit our teeth and white knuckle through it like f***ing cavemen, or we could use it as an opportunity to practice our response. The way we respond to games mirrors the way we respond to similar circumstances in real life. Because at the end of the day, the situation may be different, but our emotions are the same. When a game makes you mad, I mean really mad, when it gives you that boiling fury it's notorious for, maybe take a step back. Maybe think about why it upset you, and how an assortment of pixels on your screen was able to make you feel something so strong. Were you unfairly bested by another player? If so, how come that still affects you even after the match ends? Was your time wasted? Well then maybe think about why people play that game in the first place. You might just learn something about games, and if you look closely enough, you may even learn something about yourself. Or maybe the game just sucks, what do I know? <laughs>